What's up, Foot Clan? It's a big show. Lots of things are happening. Things are breaking as we're talking on the show, like players signing with one team and then saying, no, I'm actually going to sign with another team. But anyways, we break down the free agent frenzy part one. Subscribe to this channel. Like this show. And leave us a comment of uh, where you think a player is going to end up for Thursday's show. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Right to the bear. Mike, there is a there's an enormous cardboard bear in between us. I do see him. There's no way to ignore that. You can't just sweep that under the rug. You can turn him into a rug, but you cannot sweep him under the rug. Can you have a cardboard rug? I mean, I, I get the bear rug <laughs> analogy. Yeah, I mean, a cardboard rug, you can. It's not great. <laughs> like, you're not going to get much mud off no, of your shoes on the cardboard bear. Really slippery. <laughs> uh, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers <laughs> opening the show in the way that we do. Tuesday, March 15th, Mike, the fantasy hitman, Andy Holloway with you. Jason's in the middle of the Atlantic somewhere. He's on a boat. <laughs> I I prefer the picture of him in a in an enormous uh, flotation device. Just, just a life raft, just floating out there. Okay. Oh, I mean, like, he's totally like on his own, like his yeah. own tube. Yeah, I mean, he's happy. It's one of the tubes with the giraffe head on one end. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Carib <laughs> Caribbean waters. <laughs> But Mike and I are here to react to all of the free agent news. Oh, brother. Do you feel yourself renewed with the new football season now that all of this trade mayhem and unretirements and such have it's, taken place? It is certainly helping getting me uh, juiced up here. You got all this free agency is happening. Uh, I'm sure it's – I mean, there's still a lot to happen as well. There's still a lot of big – uh, stars out there. Well, stars is whatever, but there's still a lot of uh, impact players that could go to teams and mess up situations. Uh, and then the draft is on the way. So yeah, I've, we're getting, getting there. We're getting, getting it going. There. Uh, if, if this is the cup of coffee for the day that is the uh, the whole off season. Yes. All right. Thank you to everybody that pre-ordered the ultimate draft kit before March 10th. We have promised you a uh, a giveaway. We're going to give away a Listener League spot. That winner will be announced on Thursday. So, and you'll be notified. So, you can still pre-order the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com. Still get a bunch of pre-ordered perks. Um, but that giveaway, everybody before March 10th, we'll give that away on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, that's going on. You can check out the community at jointhefoot.com, Twitter at the FF Ballers. News and free agency oh, talk man. today. Let's start with the news. News and notes from around the league. I uh, I made the joke that Tom Brady's retirement went as well as... Ah, uh, yes, I saw. It was a good one. ...as the time I jumped into P90X. And then someone reminded me or made the joke that said, I don't know if you made it 39 days into P90X. <laughs> That's how long Tom Brady was retired. He's back. Yes, he is. The plant man is plant back. Man, no. Is this is is this just a straightforward case of I I did it, I retired, I regretted it, and I'm back? I mean, is that all it was? Yeah, probably. Just I mean, the thought of not playing football probably drove him insane. Yeah, I I don't blame him for feeling like okay, that I got to retire. This is it. I can't I can't suffer another loss like that. I mean, when you feel like you're you have a Super Bowl team and you're so close and you just you have a a devastating loss like they did to the Rams, you're like, "Okay, I think I'm done." But you, you he's a football player and you sh he shook it off. He got the cobwebs out and he's ready to go back and give it one more go. They say 39 days of parenting is all that. Yeah, I've seen those <laughs> as well. Is all that's necessary to return for your next season. It'd be hard to walk away because you're, you know, 
you can't do it ever again. So correct, and that's all he's done for what twenty? Is it twenty three seasons? Something like that. Silly, silly man. But if you shipped off Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, if you shipped off options in the offense of Tampa Bay on the move, or as many of you did in dynasty leagues, you shipped off Tom Brady to the waiver wire. Yeah. Which I was lucky enough not to do. I learned my lesson from the hold Gronk, hold Gronk, hold <laughs> Gronk, release Gronk, lose Gronk situation. But Brady is going to be fantasy relevant again. Yeah, he will be back. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be just fantasy gold yet again. We are still watching. Look, the free agency period is, is still happening. happening with no Brady. I figured it was close to a lock that Leonard Fournette would not come back to the Buccaneers. Now I feel like it's a lock he will. And now it, it feels like that. So I did take my shot yesterday just to tweet a fun joke about Keyshawn Vaughn is winning free I agency. Because like, yeah. the honest truth is if Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are gone, then Keyshawn Vaughn it becomes very interesting for fantasy football. But again, cards are still being shuffled and I think that Fournette will probably be back with the Bucks. I I think it was a few episodes ago I talked about this being pencil season, right? Where there's a lot yes. happening. With the news that's taken place now, you can take the pen out, you can set it on the desk. Just don't write anything down with it yet. We still have the rest of free agency, we still have the draft. And so we're all eager. Like I I'm trying to figure out what moves to make in a dynasty league right now. Trying to see if I can cuz there's two sides to it, right? You can make a bet. You can bet on a situation right. at a price that's discounted due to ambiguity. So you can you can juggle, you can make offers, you can see what happens. I traded for Christian Kirk uh, a week and a half ago, hoping he might get the bag someplace. We'll yeah, get, he did. We'll get to that next. I don't know if you like where the well, bag came from, but yeah. Like, we can discuss. It is, I, I think that's a, just a good thing to mention of like, if you are an aggressive player, now is the time that you need to be active. Like if you were, you know, a month ago with all of the whirling and swirling rumors of the Denver Broncos being the most aggressive right. team, like, and I think we had talked about on the show of, of my confidence that they were going to do whatever it took to get a quarterback. Now that, I mean, that's a big statement of, you don't know that it will actually work, but if you had taken the chance and traded for Cortland Sutton or traded for Jerry Judy, in that period, then you were you, a, you, you were a big winner with this free agency period. So that's just it's something to keep in mind that this is the, if you are an aggressive player, this is the time. Doesn't mean you're going to win. You can win big. You can lose big. Also, uh, so it's just this part of the fun of the game is what what type of fantasy player are you? Are you you know waiting for everything to be settled and then you'll go make your moves like you know Amon Ross St. Brown. His name is exploding on Twitter because of the addition of DJ Chark. People have their opinions one way or the other. But then now is the time to pounce if you are really an aggressive player and you don't mind taking a big L for the option of getting that big dub. Yeah, you're right. And the, let's let's just bring that to a head with a situation that's going to play out exactly like the Russell Wilson to Denver situation. Uh, we got news that the Texas grand jury declined to indict Deshaun Watson on criminal charges. Therefore, he's still a bunch of civil cases against him. Yes. But his criminal charges are, are seemingly part of the past at this point. So he is the market for Deshaun Watson has emerged quickly. We knew it would. Uh, the There are several teams being rumored as of this recording the Browns are meeting with Deshaun Watson. You have the Carolina Panthers and New Orleans Saints, who I, the Saints are the most bewildering one to me because I don't know how you fabricate it. They were $70 million over the cap when the offseason began. I know the cap being a real thing is kind of a joke, but at some point, $70 million over or whatever they are becomes a reality. But this is that situation. You just talked about Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. DJ Moore. Right. Uh, Michael Thomas. Right? Yes. Amari Cooper in with the Cleveland Brown trade that we'll talk about as well. There are players that, look, I believe in the talent of DJ Moore. Now, enough years have gone by 
to where if a significant upgrade doesn't happen at quarterback, I think you'll get more of the same. But Deshaun Watson would change everything for DJ Moore. Sure. And if if the price you're paying for DJ Moore has four touchdowns a year baked in, do it. I don't know. That could be a player you take the leap on, and then you could win big. You now, could. Now that other manager may be sitting there waiting, hoping, wishing, but Deshaun Watson's going to play football. He is. It, it is worth, I think, bringing up that he, he does still have the civil cases out there that remain to be settled, and I, I don't have knowledge, but this, I have previous knowledge of the NFL. Deshaun Watson is going to get a suspension. Like he, You don't go through all of this and not get four games, six games. Like Look back in the past of, of Zeke and Ben Roethlisberger. There was no criminal, criminal uh, uh, ramifications for them for the, the off-field situations that took place. So Watson is likely to see a suspension. And if you look like he sat out last year, he was not suspended last year. He still got paid all of his money to not play football. So just saying that that is something that will happen. Some more shake out of this. Yes. Situation. I, like he's going to get traded. He is going to play football, but I would expect him to get at least a four game suspension. I mentioned it earlier. The Browns acquired Amari Cooper from the Cowboys in exchange for a for nothing. <laughs> For nothing, basically. A 2022 fifth-round pick. Did they swap sixes as well in the deal? Something like that. Uh, and then they released Jarvis Landry. So Jarvis Landry's a free agent, wasn't happy, wanted more money, or didn't want to take a pay cut, really. Right. And then Amari Cooper is... Look, I know opinions are all over the map here, and I don't know yours. It could have been worse for Amari Cooper. That's my take of the situation. Like, I know... Everybody wants to point to Odell Beckham not working with Baker Mayfield. Right. That was a two-way street, in my opinion. Like, Baker, I look, I have never defended Baker on this show. I think he's he's mediocre at best. But, like, Jarvis Landry had a better rapport with Baker Mayfield than Odell Beckham did. And Amari Cooper, look, you could have traded him to a situation where he's not the clear-cut one. There, he's the one in Cleveland. So that's my opinion. I think it could have been worse for Cooper. Could have been better maybe, but it's unlikely he was going to be traded to be a one on a team that you love. Yeah, I, I think it's fantasy-wise it's worse. I mean, you if he was on the Dallas Cowboys, you would have felt like he is a top 20-ish or even better type of fantasy wide receiver. I don't know that with all of this history of – even with the rapport of Jarvis Landry with Baker Mayfield that he had compared to Beckham, Jarvis – would pop up here and there, <laughs> like for a good week. Like, oh, finally, I played Jarvis Landry, and I'm not ripping my hair out. So it's it could have definitely been worse, but it is certainly worse than him being on the Cowboys. Yeah, and so Michael Gallup, five year, sixty two million dollar contract. They bet on Michael Gallup. Gallup and Ceedee Lamb are going to be the the main wide receivers there. Gallup coming off the ACL. Where do you slot him in? Everyone wants to bump Ceedee Lamb up. Dalton Schultz, back on the franchise tag. Michael Gallup, five-year deal. Yeah, I, I think that CeeDee Lamb, we should get closer to the the hope that we had for him last year where I feel like he, a top – a wide receiver one should be easily within the, the realm of possibilities for, for CeeDee Lamb. It will surprise me, though, if the Cowboys don't spend like a day two pick on a wide receiver – because it's they all they lost Cedric Wilson as well. You can't go into the season with Ceedee Lamb and Michael Gallup, who may not even be ready to go in Week One. You have to have other players. You have to be able to compete. So let's see who falls into their lap. Because Ceedee Lamb fell into their lap in the draft. There was, I don't think any mock drafters had the Cowboys with the weapons they had going after Ceedee Lamb. It was just the draft fell that way, and he seemed like the best player on their board. So. The, the Cowboys is still nebulous to me. The uh, Devontae Adams situation. He has said that he refuses to play under the franchise tag in 2022. This is coming from Ian Rappaport. Do you foresee, simple question, do you foresee that being any, there being any complications with Adams being on the field for week one? I don't, just based off of history, uh, uh, I saw someone tweeting about it. Can't remember who it was or I would source, but they were saying really like the only player in recent history who actually sat out the whole year 
was Le'Veon Bell. Like you've you've had players who definitely have sat out for several weeks, but I don't I don't see a situation where Adams doesn't play the whole year. Aaron Rodgers contract details came out. Whew. <laughs> they should just give him part of the franchise. Oh man, one hundred fifty point eight million. That's guaranteed, right? Over the next three seasons. He, it's it's a lot of money. It's not about money. Uh, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> it's me. One Aaron. One year. I, I told you it wasn't about money. He sounds like Dave Gettleman. I just no, that's me. Oh, hey. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kirk Cousins, <laughs> one year, thirty five million dollar contract extension. <laughs> This was a maneuver. It's a maneuver to protect some cap money. He's the king. I know. He, he hasn't. The, he hasn't had to earn anything. He's made so much money, so much money. All his money's been guaranteed, right? Over yes. the last two deals. Yes. Since he's been in Minnesota Viking, every year I'd be doing behind the back passes. I'd be doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Hook shots. You ever done that? Oh, has anyone ever done a, a, a like a Hakeem they used sky to, hook? They used to call me uh, Kareem Abdul Mahomes <laughs> out there. Uh, Khalil Mack trade. Chargers going all in on defense. Khalil Mack from the Bears. They didn't give up a ton to add him to Joey Bosa. And they signed J.C. Jackson, right? Yes, they did. They're going to be legit. That division. Oh, it's going to be a fight in the AFC West. Um, is that all the news site? We have all the free agent signings we want to discuss the fantasy implications of the reactions to, but is there anything else? I think that's it. No, sir. Okay. You want to take a quick break and then get into the free agents? Let's go. Free agent frenzy. All right, let's start with the Dolphins, shall we? Thank you. Thank you. Please. I don't know. No, I mean, we've got animal sounds yeah. are a key part of this show, Mike. <laughs> I can see you're doing really well. Uh, Chase Edmonds, running back, formerly of the Arizona Cardinals, signed a two-year $12.6 million deal. Immediately, too. $6.1 million guaranteed. Chase Edmonds to Miami. What was your reaction in the moment, and then where are you now with that trade or that uh, signing? So my uh, my immediate reaction was, "Wow, they really got that done <laughs> quickly for a uh, period of negotiation that just opened up." Wink, wink. Uh, but it was, you know, pouring out R.I.P. for Miles Gaskin, the Gas Man, who has provided us some some pretty sweet fantasy value on the cheap in the past couple of years. I think that he, he fits. I mean, you, like you have, uh, Daniel bringing that, the, the Shanahan type of system over there and they need speed. And Chase Edmonds, it, Chase Edmonds is a good player and he's very fast. So I think that he does fit into the mold of, of what they will be looking for. I don't, you know, expect them to add another, yeah, running back. I, I don't know that they're done. Um, but either way, like he he becomes a very interesting. At least, I won't, I'm not going to put a number on it. But he was a he was a free agent winner. Uh, aside from coming back to the Cardinals, I think that this is about as a a good of a landing spot for a free agent running back for fantasy value. He is a or was a fan favorite out here. Really yes. smart player. Um, pass protection will be key here for Tua. And just having that outlet that knows where to be. I think that's what Chase Edmonds was the best at, was when a play broke down, he just found a way to be involved. So I think they'll add another body. But Edmonds, Edmonds looks very interesting. Most people wanted to know. I've, for some reason, they view, it seems like the public views Chase Edmonds with the possibility of being a bell cow. And I just don't see him as that. I don't. I don't think anyone sees him as that. I mean, the again, it or the guy in a backfield. He, I think he can be. Like he had the, the mustard. Yeah, but he could have been the guy last year in Arizona, and they went out and added James Conner. So that's the most likely scenario here, isn't it? That they go out and add a James Conner s type of back to complement I mean, Chase uh, Edmonds. If they bring in a hammer, that would be that would be pretty devastating for fantasy. If you're bringing in someone who you're like. 
That's a goal line running back, which is possible. So yeah, be careful with is. your with your uh, betting on Chase to get it all. They also added Cedric Wilson, three year deal for Cedric Wilson from the Cowboys heading to the Dolphins. This was a move that I tweeted immediately. Makes you feel good. About, the kind of splash that makes you feel good about Jalen Waddle. Sure, you pay. It also reflects the the free agent wide receiver market to me, which is. There's not a lot of big names out there. Cedric Wilson was a – they pursued him, they got him, they added him to the roster, but he's not going to take away from Jalen Waddle. No, I, I think he he helps him out. It it will be interesting to see, you know, like does Cedric Wilson go into – is he their slot wide receiver now and you actually are pushing Jalen Waddle to the outside and we get bigger plays and we see him use down the field actually fully utilizing that speed, which – so that's the that's the hope with the addition of Wilson. The other side of the Cardinals' backfield, James Conner, three-year, $21 million extension, 13.5 guaranteed, back to Arizona, back to a role that he thrived in, tons of touchdowns last year for James Conner, also was better than advertised in the passing game, in my opinion. Well, that's really where he thrived. Like, he, he wasn't tremendous on the ground. Not on a per-carry basis. Yeah, what was he, like, three points I don't have the number in front of me I know he was sub four which yes yards per carry is not everything but when you are like when that's your calling card it, you should be a little bit better he was an impact play yes player it, last through the year. receiving game yes. yes I mean you man that run at the end of the year and I do mean a run of games right number one overall finish number two number three um back to Arizona Right now, Eno, Benjamin, Jonathan Ward, the other backfield mates, do you expect them to consider adding another body in the draft? I've heard <laughs> conflicting reports. I have no idea what the Cardinals are going to do. They they have so many needs. What if okay. I told you they were going to give some of their money to Zach Ertz? How would you feel about that? Not great, honestly. Three years. <laughs> Wait, did that really happen? Yeah. <laughs> Three-year, $31 million contract for Zach Ertz. 17 and a half guaranteed. Christian Kirk departs. A.J. Green certainly not returning. Right now, Zach Ertz is interesting to me, fantasy-wise. Not that he's going to be a league winner, but that you went from ambiguity to being able to lock him in as a starting tight end in the in dynasty leagues for the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I see him more. I see this. It, you know, it's a three-year. 31 wink wink it's just, it's 17 and a half million dollars this feels more like a probably a two-year deal he's already 31 he'll be turning 32 during the season uh, general manager Steve Keim is good at <laughs> good at giving money to to uh players who are a little bit past their prime and like I think he'll be he'll be usable Zach Ertz will be usable for fantasy football but it's just it's going to be like here or there of like yeah the I had the tight end eight on the on the week it's I don't he know finished that it'll be the consistent year seven eight twelve eight so yeah, that's I mean, but that's you know that was a hundred and nineteen reception one thousand yard pace if he scores you can get a nice week yeah. from him if not you're going to get a Witten week from him he's going to be targeted yes he will be targeted and it. Like I'm where where I'm saying I don't know what the Cardinals are going to do because they have they have DeAndre Hopkins they have Rondale Moore. Rondale Moore who is with with Kirk not coming back you would you have to hope that Rondale Moore is a gigantic winner in this free agency period you know because of the subtraction of the team but you I mean like it's it's hard in Arizona to not get Andy Isabella vibes. Of they spent a second round pick on him. No, you had opportunity, never turned anything. I think Rondale Moore is a better player than Andy Isabella, so I'm more hopeful. But like, do they make another splash at the the wide receiver position? If that's where it comes down to Zach Ertz, because the the Cardinals could be truly lacking uh, pass catching weapons after when all is said and done and the season starts, and then, then Zach Ertz becomes more interesting to yeah, me. Think, As of now, it's just you're going to get 50 and you hope he scores a touchdown. Yeah, he. I think he fit in well with Kyler. I think Kyler liked throwing the ball to him. The Cardinals have made a 
splash in the offseason for several years in a row now. Last offseason was the J.J. Watt news from Steve Kime. The year before was the DeAndre Hopkins blockbuster trade. They do tend to add veterans, one-year deals. There could be another player in that category that gets added or traded to Arizona. I can't imagine. Maybe this is just bias because of the Andy Isabella deal and li living out here. I just don't know if the trust level of just throwing Rondale on the outside for every play is going to be there, but they may not have a choice because Christian Kirk. Well, I was going to say, before we move on for Zach Ertz, there's, there is a lot of uh, whispers from the bushes coming that Max Williams, the tight end, will also be back in Arizona. Yeah, they like him. So I'd, I'd, I don't know what they're doing, uh, but if Dos Equis comes back, I don't, I don't know what the Cardinals Well, he's got to come back is. from a major injury too. Sure. Uh, Chase, or not Chase Edmonds, Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk four years, $72 million, $37 million guaranteed to Jacksonville. Jacksonville pulled out the how to run a team poorly for dummies book and read <laughs> and just replicated off season moves that look, I, I like Christian Kirk. He's never had a thousand yard season. He's 25 years old. He was probably the cream of the crop in the free agent market at wide receiver. Yeah. So he goes and cashes in. Does the money plus, by the way, the best move the Jaguars actually made was uh, Brandon Scherf, the guard. Yes. Adding him to protect Trevor Lawrence and give Christian Kirk a chance to run it past 10 yards downfield. They also added Zay Jones. Okay, whatever. Depth piece, depth piece at wide receiver, three years, $24 million. They added Evan Ingram, one year, $9 million. They use him, or they have used the tight end historically. I believe Dan Arnold's still on the roster. He is. And... So, and Dan Arnold is actually younger than Evan Engram. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but let's get back to Christian Kirk. Okay. DJ Chark's gone. Mm -hmm. LaVisca Chenault experiment. It didn't, last year was not promising for him being a centerpiece. Jamal Agnew, injured, oh. severe injury, was kind of flashing. Yeah. Is Christian Kirk going to be a wide receiver too in 2022? Oh. <sighs> End of year numbers. Does he break a thousand yards in no, his first year in Jackson? I don't think he does. Is he their number one fantasy producer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, like, that's not necessarily saying a lot. No, he's he's a flex. He like he. It's so difficult to gauge because I need a little better than flex. I know. I know for my just, dynasty team. I know you just traded for him, and I'm trying to figure it out here. It was just such a bad year for Trevor Lawrence last year, it, it, at least what I watched. I know some people watched Lawrence and they have some hope. I felt it was a really poor rookie year. I get the the external situation that Trevor Lawrence was dealing with. I do not – I'm not writing those things off because it was, it was a bad situation for the rookie. But Christian Kirk is a very good slot wide receiver, and you – that that's not the answer. Like that that's not the answer to me to unlocking an NFL passing attack. You have to have a true field stretching number one. Or it, I think he's there to replace Marvin Jones. Sure, Marvin Jones twenty percent target share last year. Lavisca Chenault seventeen percent. You remember Laquan Treadwell having impact down the stretch for <laughs> yeah, this roster. Yes, I do. That was fun. So Tavon Austin getting targets. So you know Marvin Jones thirty two years old. I I don't know. It, it all comes down to Lawrence, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. If like that's that's the positive spin that if I had just traded for Christian Kirk, you have to at least have hope because Trevor Lawrence was the next he was the next football god coming out of college. Like he has all of the tools, he has all the pedigree, he's the number 1 overall pick. So that's that's the hope, is that your wide receiver is now tied to that quarterback moving into the future. And Lawrence can certainly take a jump where next offseason we're like, man, Jaguars sure are glad they gave Christian Kirk all that money. They had paid the bad team tax because like, that's why you had to give him so much money. Is It was the bad team. You have to overwhelm them. Yes. Christian Kirk, the Raiders are great at that. <laughs> Christian Kirk was you know, at least one of the – top three options in this free agency class he there was 
I'm sure, several suitors going after Christian Kirk, and the Jaguars just had to had to pay up. Not the same team, obviously, not the same tax, but last offseason the Patriots paid a lot of money for Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick right. Bourne. And it it seems familiar it seems similar to me paying Christian Kirk and Zay Jones this kind of money. You're paying slightly higher than their production warrants, but to secure them and try to reinforce around Lawrence and give him a shot. Yeah, there the nice thing is this this group with Kirk, Jones, and Ingram to me is is while I I don't think this is like a a star studded group this is still much better than Lawrence had last year like you have actual capable players a Jones at the end of last year with the Raiders like he's the one who stepped up as the 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 wide receiver behind uh Hunter Renfro and the Evan Ingram signing that one I actually think is perfection for the Jaguars it's so low risk it's just a one year deal 9 million dollars Evan Ingram can play in line as a pass catcher. He can't block, but he could he could play there. He could go be a slot wide receiver. Like he is still really fast. Hands are he can drop hands are highly any any position on the field. His hands are highly suspect. But I think that that was a perfect move for them when they, you know, at the beginning of the year they were featuring James O'Shaughnessy. They go aggressively go get Dan Arnold and. Like he's getting a whole bunch of targets, so Evan Ingram is is interesting to me. I have no idea where his ADP will end up. Like the I, Zach Ertz will definitely be drafted before Evan Ingram, but like by how much? Is it a huge gap? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It, that whole situation in Jacksonville is going to be a messier one to find fantasy value for before the draft because of the Lawrence situation. A lot of names. There are a lot of different names on the roster. Travis Etienne as a pass catcher. Ingram, Arnold, Marvin Jones, if he's still there. Christian Kirk. So, scary bets for fantasy. Sure. Which, and, a, a, a uh, little note, um, out here in Arizona, one of our you know uh, radio guys was tweeting about, was talking about James Conner. And his information was a little bit messy. But the interesting note that I thought that he was tweeting about was the uh, the New York Jets and the Jacksonville Jaguars were, were both in on trying to get James Conner. Now, again, I don't know how credible the information was from, uh, from this source, but the fact that the Jags were... Well, the Jets make tons of sense. The, yeah, the but Jets... the Jacksonville one is eye-popping. Yes, when you spend a first-round pick on a running back, but it, it was not this regime that spent the first round pick on Travis Etienne. So they're a team to watch. I'm like, do they make a move? Do they, do they bring in a compliment to Travis Etienne through either like, does Melvin Gordon end sure. up in Jacksonville? Like there's still players out there that could oh, he seems completely weird. disrupt what you hope Travis Etienne is going to be. Melvin Gordon to Jacksonville makes the most sense ever. Because he needs to be paid more. He thinks he's worth more than he is. Right. And he might get it in Jacksonville. Also, I am I am smiling because I am following this uh, Randy Gregory situation. Yes. Which is mind-blowing to me. The official Cowboys account had tweeted. Because uh, he had Randy Gregory had, had agreed to terms with the Cowboys yeah, this morning. Well, and was it a five-year deal or something like that? It was Yeah, five-year, $70 million deal, $28 million guaranteed, and Shefty was reporting it early this morning. Oh, yeah. Well, so were the Dallas Cowboys. Surprise! And then the Denver Broncos tweet out, surprise, and he's signed with the Broncos. Oof. So, Ooh, man. Legal tampering. That's a good time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. Um, wow. Wow. That's just you always got one. Every offseason you got one like pump fake. That'd be the move. If you were not happy with your local team, that'd be my move. I'd go, I'd get all the way into the room <laughs> and I'd take the pin out and I'd go to and I'd go, hold on a second. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you got to hit them with the uh like you're trying to sign, like, oh, this pen's not working. Oh do a, man. Do you have another pen? <laughs> Oh, and then you pull out the hat of the other team, <laughs> and you put it on, and you say, "Just kidding." Just you hit the Broncos music. Oh. By God, 
It's the Denver Broncos. Oh my god! Their GM just comes storming in, bum 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 oh, bum with a different contract. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I assume you have a pin that works. Oh man, that would be that would be the greatest moment of all time. Oh my gosh! I mean, what a <laughs> wow! Uh, Brooks, how do you feel about your hometown team losing Randy Gregory? Uh, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought you might not worry. They, Denver could take the next suspension or whatever comes along. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Al, I will ask you this one more question about all Christian right. Kirk. Because a week ago, I, I was making a decision and I was trading for Jalen Waddle in a dynasty league. And I had the option of going with Christian Kirk or Juju Smith-Schuster with the open market ahead of them. Right? Kirk was going to find a new team. Juju's going to find a new team. Mm-hmm. As of right now, Juju does not have a new home. Right. Would you take Christian Kirk with this contract in Jacksonville or Juju without a contract right now in Dynasty? I would take Kirk. Okay. Thanks for answering that way for me. Uh, it, it is. I would. I'll, I'll take the known, the known money. Kirk is good. This contract says he will be a focal point of this offense one way or the other. Will it work out? TBD. And at this point for Juju to surpass Kirk, I mean – he has to land in the perfect spot. It's like Juju goes to the Kansas City Chiefs on a one-year deal sure. or something. Like it would have to be just is it. Have you seen the Landry small... to the Chief rumors? Chief uh, yeah. rumors. Yeah, I've seen them. What a fit that would be. That would it would be a good signing. Uh, DJ Chark one-year deal with the Lions, ten million guaranteed. It's this is a prove it again deal for yep. DJ Chark. The world uh, revolves around Amon Ross St. Brown news, apparently. Look, uh, we talked about him a lot in this show. I don't believe that – I think he's a good player. I don't think he's a great player, and I don't think he can hold up an entire offense. Now, I don't know how I feel about DJ Chark being added as a – this is not a deterrent to me. Like, you have to have other wide receivers on your roster. They signed Josh Reynolds. They have DJ Chark. They could do more in the offseason, but DJ Chark here uh, – I'm not excited about – his fantasy opportunities no. there. I mean, he, DJ Chark will be there to run nine routes. Right. And, and Jared Goff doesn't really throw down the field. So, I mean, if to me, if you were excited about Amon Ross St. Brown, you should continue to be excited about him as this DJ Chark is, is very large and very fast. Like, a defense has to at least account for him. respect the fact that if you don't have like you know coverage on him then it's a broken uh easy touchdown for the Detroit Lions so I I think it's a positive thing for St. Brown you would take St. Brown and you would take Hawkinson over DJ Chark so that yes. puts him as at best the third option on the Lions offense so that's where he is fantasy wise the Steelers agreed to terms with quarterback Mitchell Trubisky here we go two year 14.2 million dollars a chance to see what he's got without break, breaking the bank on him. Yep. This is the spot that I thought Trubisky would go. I believe it's – I think he's 14 per. Right. So, like – What did I say? Total? Yeah. It, well, I'm just saying, like, this was very fun. Like, w when this news was breaking and Twitter – the, the reaction of, of Twitter and the memes that started flooding my timeline were – baffling to me honestly because they all came out with not all but but just what I was seeing was very negative sentiment about the addition of Mitchell Trubisky and it was people if you didn't sign Trubisky you realize Mason Rudolph was in line to be your starting quarterback and well after it, the signing their their odds went from plus 5500 to plus 7000 to win Mm -hmm. I mean, so they just, went down and then, and then, you know, Mason Rudolph, he's not a real option. Correct. Now they will tell him to compete. Yes. This is exactly what I said would happen the other day. They'll tell him to compete and they'll wink, wink at him. And then Mitch Trubisky will start, but you're excited for Mitchburg. I, uh, yeah, I've heard that as well. Here's where I'm excited. Mason Rudolph is not the answer. The dude is not a franchise quarterback. And Maybe some fans and Steelers in, in Pittsburgh, they still believe he can be. I do not. C can Trubisky be that? I don't know. 
But at least the I don't know is not a firm no. There's no way he can do it like Mason Rudolph. So, yes, I, I have at least – I have more hope as of yesterday if Deontay or Chase Claypool is – they're on my fantasy teams. Far more hope than I did going – looking at the beginning of the season that Mason Rudolph was going to be the guy. I completely agree there. And you have to ask the question, is, is this Mitchell Trubisky – season going to be better than a big Ben season was going to be. And yeah, I think the answer is yes. But you can't do you, it doesn't seem like you people will feel better about Deontay now than they did with Big Ben. And that's a to me that is so a, is that a buy low opportunity? That is a trade go get Deontay Johnson. If you've like I think the talent of Deontay Johnson is locked in. He's a good wide receiver. He he can get open. And Trubisky is like if you have a a porous offensive line would you rather have your statue, Big Ben, back there or Trubisky, right. who is athletic? Like, the, the dude can move. So, yes, you now you have a mobile quarterback. That counterbalances some of the offensive line problems, which I'm I'm sure they're still going to try and fix those things up. Can he throw but, it to Najee? Uh, and he can. That, that'll be the that, – that's the, the biggest question mark for me is the, the check downs to Najee I do believe go down because – that's like when Ben's about to get hit, you check the ball down to Najee. Trubisky will run, and we know that mobile, quarter, mobile quarterbacks do affect how many targets and things that, that players get, and there will be not as much checking down. But will the offense just be able to move a little bit better and, have, and stay on the field longer with Trubisky as a quarterback? I think that the answer is probably yes. And the deal is so low risk for the Steelers that – in this particular draft class where the, the quarterbacks don't feel like they're locked in as of right now, they're not locked in that you have to get in the top five if you want one of these quarterbacks, someone could fall to them and they can draft that player and give them a legitimate year of oh. your, the, you're the backup. Like we're taking you Trub to the bridge ski. Oh, there you go. Cause the, he's the, the bridge quarterback. The bridge quarterback. I just, I, that's what I'm here for. I thought this deal was a, you, you liked it. I thought it, of all the options, which most of the options were poop sandwiches, right? Like, it's either give Trubisky this small amount of money, or use picks and go get Garoppolo, and give him a lot of money. I, just, I the options weren't great. I think they did the best that they could. Has Randy Gregory signed with any other team? <laughs> the, Not yet. The triple cross. Oh my! <laughs> oh man! With the Broncos posting that. That surprise meme, if he switched him up on them again, that would go down in history. Okay, so the Trubisky contract, it is. It's two-year 14. It can go up to 27 yeah. with incentives. By the way, the Falcons have emerged as a potential trade contender for the uh, in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. Goodness gracious. Which um, I could be wrong quoting this, but I think he's from Georgia. Yes, I, I, let, me, let me double check that. He, he must love that wide receiver room. In Atlanta. Yeah, born in Gainesville, Georgia. It would just be – the offense would show up for a meeting. It would be Deshaun Watson and Kyle Pitts, and that's it. <laughs> they don't have anybody else. Yeah, I don't know. Other than, you know, place of birth, I have no idea how that happens. I think everybody that everybody that's not completely happy with the quarterback situation, uh, rumors are abounding of what if, what if, what if with a 26-year-old Deshaun Watson. Jets are re-signing – I did not know this. They're re-signing Tevin Coleman. That All doesn't right. seem worth the money. <laughs> um, oh. CJ Uzama, three-year, $24 million deal with the Jets. All right. Braxton Berrios, re-signed. $7 million guaranteed, two years, $12 million with the Jets. Yeah, we'll see. That one is like... Like, both of those moves are... Like, for Elijah Moore... I think they're interesting. You think the Jets are? I know these moves, these particular moves of like finding value at the end of the draft. Yeah. I mean, may, maybe that's true, but it, neither of them are going like the Barrios signing and Uzama are not going to make you throw cold water on your Elijah Moore share. Oh, no, 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 they no, could have, no, I mean, no. they can go out. They could have gone out and signed Christian Kirk, right? They could have gone sure. out and made a bigger splash. Yeah. I, I, the, the, just the Braxton Barrios one. I think it's like low key. Interesting. Do you want to uh, have some fun at the tight end position? Oh, yes. Uh, first, the Colts. 
Yes. Yes. Mo Alley Cox. Dude. Headed back to the Colts on a three-year deal. Jack Doyle, baby hands, is retired. He is no longer in the way of the largest man to ever play professional football. They have Michael Pittman and Gigantor. Like, as of right now, let's go. Uh, you know how I love me some league, fringe tight ends. I, well, look, I like <laughs> Kylan Grant in there. And with Jack Doyle gone, Moali Cox, I look, he can carry the world on his shoulders, but I don't know if he can carry the entire tight end room in Indianapolis. So keep that name in your mind. Yes. Um, well, see, Kylan Grant's in tight end for the Colts. Oh, I've keep keep Mo Alley Cox in mind as well, let's see how the see how the rest of the staff shakes out. Shall I shall I move us to our next signing? I guess so. In some way, somehow, the Seahawks received what are they doing? The Seahawks received Noah Fant in that trade and said, you know what? It's time to sign Will Disley to a three year, twenty four million dollar deal. Big Montana. He's back, baby. I think Montana, like, they're riding a uh, Yellowstone wave right now. Oh, yeah. Did he get a, a Kevin Costner bump? Yes. <laughs> a little 1883 bump for Will Disley. Congratulations, man. I don't think you want practice without Will Disley out on the field. Clap those, clap those hands. Now, the the Jimmy Graham bets were against Will Disley, right? You betcha. Man, did 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 the retirement bet actually happen? What was the bet? I just I, who who's more likely to catch another pass? Yeah, I can't remember. I, I yeah. thought maybe it was who's going to retire first, but Will Disley. Well, number one, he's recovered from multiple devastating injuries. Uh. And apparently the Seahawks saw the 21 for 231 yards and one <laughs> touchdown of last year and said, we got to give that, we got to make that dude a multimillionaire. Um, he's in the uh, 31st percentile speed score, 20th percentile athleticism, but for Montana. I mean, there's, I love the guy. There's no question that like in that run with Russell Wilson, the guy was getting it done. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what the Seahawks are doing with this move. Yeah, I mean, the you don't save your off season of uh, trading for Drew Locke and losing Russell Wilson by signing Big Montana. Nothing new on the uh, news front. Well, the, Brooksy, we, we do have uh, the Lazard King. Alan Lazard mm. will be tendered with a second round level, which on like that is he'll stay in Green Bay. Yes, that is what that means, and MVS has been rumored to several teams and and rumored to be getting a uh, a decent-sized contract. Lazard flashed a few times last year. If it really is him as the wide receiver, too, okay. with, with, with uh, big money Rodgers coming through. Oh, no. I, we got we to gotta work out yeah, a little. Work, I'll workshop something. Work out a little... Uh... I tried to tell you it's not about the money. I just really like money. Well, I mean, you got to take it when it's there. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say no to $150 million. Remember, he's like, I could retire, and then they're like, yes, but $150 million. <laughs> Go Jedi. Hmm. You do not want to retire. No, I mean, that's that's a bag. Yep. But, I mean, my, my dynasty team is super pumped about the Lazard news. Yeah, I just don't have enough confidence that He'll be a regular on the old starting roster. I think he's a, an okay player. He's very big. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got that going. And you'll never take that away from him. No, no. And he's he's been tendered. Big and tender. Oh, he's tender. <laughs> big and tender. <laughs> All righty. Well, we he weeps at those movies. Uh, we're going to have more free agent news, more signings, more things happening. Back with a Thursday show. Uh, Anything else you guys want to chat about? How you doing, Al? I'm doing well. All right. You excited for the Lazard King? Oh, yeah. You excited for big uh, big money? Aaron Rodgers back? I'm glad he's back. You think he'll smile now? No. Okay. He still hates playing you think football. He'll, <laughs> you think he'll be... Um, 
it, Roger seems like the you know Jordan. Jordan had his uh, documentary that came out, and you know everybody Will mm -hmm. Purdue on there. He was an a hole, right? Everybody says yes. he was an a hole. You know, expected a lot from you, yelled at you all the time, got things done. You think you think that uh, eventual memoir for you know, Rogers is coming out? He'll get things done. Okay. Yeah, that says it. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. And like I said, we'll be back with more free agent frenzy chatter on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.